Hey, what's going on, everyone? Just wanted to uh, come out and uh, kind of show my setup I'm working with here. I was uh, working with the frequent flyer and uh, was asked to uh, come and drum and uh, potentially join some uh, bands uh, from a jam session last night that happens um, every Thursday night in the location that I live in at this uh, YM and beer garden so the frequent flyer man it, that kit works so great for that because it's easily uh travel you know travels well easy to pack up easy to tune and set up sets up in literally five minutes if that um and uh sounds great just because I, I threw a uh, emad there on the front um and then i've got uvs on the toms and then the ported um eq3 in the front so that way I can throw mics in it. Um, and what I found is just using the EAD with this works phenomenally well. So what I do is I take this EAD and throw it on this kit because that way it's super easily travelable. Sometimes I'll bring an extra kick mic. Um, I have a Beta 91A, which is one of those flat panel uh, mics I'm trying to, there it is. So it's one of these uh, flat paneled ones. These make amazing kick drum mics. So what I usually do is just put an EQ uh, pillow inside where, you know, it's an Evans uh, pillow. Um, and it's just touching the batter head just a little bit and leaving the front rezzo open. And then you can see I kind of I have this U stand that I had to duct tape for it to stop the pole to stop sliding back and forth, but um, I just got it used and for very cheap, and it works great because then that way I mount the um, what I have is a KSM 141, um, which is a fantastic not you can use them as overheads individual instrument mics. Um, but what I do is I pair this um, KSM, which is an Omni and a directional all-in-one because it has a sliding collar. You just rotate the collar and it turns it to a uh, Omni directional and will pick up all directions. Or you can make it just a directional. Um, so the two combined to make a really great um, kick mic setup because then you're getting all that low and... and um, the Beta 91A has a natural EQ cut, uh, switch in the bottom, which, um, gets rid of the, the mids and some of the stuff that creates more of the overtones and then focuses more on the punch and the low end of it. So you can either, you know, leave it flat or you can, uh, engage the EQ. But my point being that if I bring, um, any... Uh, interior mics that that's what I usually use is the Beta 91A um, and then in addition just throw the uh, EAD on top and this kit you would never know that it's that it's you know uh, air quotes bop kit by any means because of how fat the kit the kit sounds um, and then especially once you mic it because all it is is you can just plug either a left in a mono or a left and a right into whatever PA system they have going for all the other ones. So then your drums are being mic'd and coming out of, this is the brain for the EAD. And as you can see, because I have it set up here, that I use one where I'm just plugging one into um, the PA system or into the Ampeg bass amp, depending on if I'm playing with someone that needs to use the bass amp. Um, or if I'm coming out of the PA. Now coming out of the PA, I have the entire array that's coming out as um, the auxiliary stuff. So you have your master and then your aux in. So that aux in, when I turn this, it affects all of the mics that are running in from the um, array, from the interface into the PA, so then out of the PA speakers, you get every single microphone coming out of the PA, um, which can be a bit much, you know, and be a little loud or, or overpowering for 
um, other stuff. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just use the mono, that orange cable, so that that way it's just one side, you know, a mono coming out, um, and doesn't interfere with more uh, channels, but also creates great sound. So in any case, um, I've got the frequent flyer for that. Great travel kit, easily portable, sounds great. And if you mic it, it's just, it's unbelievable. Okay, then we've got uh, the Gretsch. And this is another one that I don't mind taking around with me. This was actually my gigging and schlepping kit for, I don't know, at least a couple years. Um, and it's been around. It's got, uh, you know, a little bit of some some marks in it and, um, you know, just kind of been around the block and a little bit of scratch there and that kind of stuff. Um, and that was before I had these uh, cases too. Uh, the cases I got um, as part of the trade deal that I did when I traded that uh, Pearl Masters Custom in for the Mapex. So, um, you know, not having any cases and that and just kind of wrapping towels around them and that stuff. Um, but they still sound great and uh, works great. And like I said, I'm a big fan of putting EMADs and EQ3s on pretty much any kit because it will sound it, I found that no matter the dimensions no matter you know the size the depth all that that the EQ 3s with the EMAD that combination will sound good on damn near any bass drum any bass drum so that's why even with this one you can see I have a flat black one but that's still an EQ 3 it's not coated um, you know it's the flat um, but the, this is coded, this is coded, um, and they just work phenomenally for getting that, whoop, sorry, yeah, sorry about that, guys. They work phenomenally, um, for getting that low end punch, but also keeping that good tone, okay? So, then back to just my final point of, I finally got this Mapex all back up, all the toms. And I got my order in. I just got the order in of all my uh, UVs. And last time I went with UV2s, just because, uh, you know, it kind of creates a deeper and shorter um, fundamental. Um, but, you know, I like my drums to sing. And I was having a convo with some other people who were asking my opinion on, you know, what kits might be better to get um and just for sound wise and stuff and one of them uh the comparison was a tama um star classic the uh walnut birch and those kits are phenomenal i love those kits um however they are die cast hoops and for some of those that aren't familiar with die cast um you know they're going to create a much quicker shorter fundamental note um which is good for recording and and which is good well good for a lot of things but uh me personally i think that having and being able to take away is much better than getting something that can't do that in the first place or that you'd have to switch out you know to flanged hoops from die cast um to get you know a wider sound and have more of a singing toms kind of thing so um anyway that's just my personal opinion and personal choice and and it's up to you know everyone else what they like um and not to say that you can't make die cast hoop sound you know <laughs> i keep almost dropping my phone i'm sorry about that may you can't make uh, that you can't make die cast hoop sound like that but I just find that, you know, it's better to have something that will sing, 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 be super resonant um, and, you know, will be able to do all those different things um, and then just use muffling or use tuning methods or, you know, even putting different hoops on and that stuff so that that way, if you want loud, uh, singing toms with more resonance, you, you have that. But if you want something that sounds more like diecast or a tama and a quick fundamental, um, a lot of pearls sound like that too. Uh, my Pearl Masters Custom was like that. And even though it didn't have diecast, 
um, just the depths and because it had re-rings in it. So if people aren't familiar what re-rings are, that's what's inside the shell where they create a second layer, like a, a hoop um, that's inside the drum that's, that's the bearing edge, but also basically if you imagine a shell within like two rings, one at the top, one at the bottom, um, that helps with uh, the way the sound waves bounce back and forth and travel between the, the batter head and the resonant, um, in addition to uh, creating kind of a quicker, a quicker note and fundamental. So anyway, here we go, guys. I threw a splash up there. I got my crashes there, and I put the 10 back up, and I'm more of a fan of just having one up and two down. Um, and the reason being just because I like my rides, um, you know, further over and more in this space, um, where the second Tom is, um, you know, just for, for my own personal, you know, comfort and, and where I like to go. Um, but this is going to work great. And, um, I literally have just gotten the toms on there. They're not, you know, by any means in fine tuning, but just to give you an idea. Well, that, yeah, that's really out. Let me turn the snares off. It's not, not terrible, but yeah, I need to tune it. Like I said, I, have, I haven't gone through and, and tuned. I just, I just seeded them, got rid of the wrinkles and then um, have been letting them stretch, but I haven't tune tuned them. So that's the 10. Here's the 12. And that's pretty close. Um, and then once I, you know, do my uh, tuning and, and a little bit of muffling, then they'll really sound good. Here's the 14. Okay, and then the 16. So, um, yeah, obviously I need to do uh, a little work on it and that's what I came out to do was, uh, you know, maybe throw some dots on and just see uh, how that affects it. And, and for me, I like leaving my drums wide open and with coated heads, um, a lot of the times, you know, you don't have to use any muffling because uh, the coating, you know, creates more of that warmth um, and a little bit shorter uh, decay. So, um, you know, having dots on, I usually don't do with coated heads, but since these are UV1s and not UV2s, uh, they do ring a bit more um, and have a little bit more sustain to them than the twos do. So let's see now with the dot. Yeah, well, I really need to work on this drum, <laughs> but... So anyway, just uh, showing everybody, you know, that I got the UVs on, obviously need to tune them, like I've said a bazillion times. Um, and then last but not least, which I will show, that, um, what I did was I threw, uh, this time I used an Evans G1 on the snare. And I think that sounds great. It sounds really good. Um, it's kind of similar to the, um, you know, Aquarian texture coated, uh, but it's more like a UV. Um, I, I'm saying the texture coated Aquarian is more like a UV because of the coating, the way that they have that texture coating on it. And those are great for like brush work. Um, they're really sensitive. Um, and the G1s, you know, people are familiar with G1s. Usually we're using them on toms or um, that stuff, but... With the snare, I think it sounds great. Yeah. So, it, you know, they're 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 somewhat in range and they're pretty close, but I'm just happy to have my, my UVs back and, uh, 
just got them, you know, in the mail, and so trying to get those set up as soon as possible so that I can um, do another uh, couple takes of something I'm I'm working on, but this time with the coated heads um, and adding the 10 inch into the array so that that way I can uh, kind of approach it in a different way and maybe play some different things with it. But with the snare, just the snare alone. Sounds good, yeah. That's with no muffling or anything, but. Also, I want to give Brian a shout out because Brian uh, really turned me on to, to the UVs. I had played on them before, but I just never owned any uh, myself. And you just played on them on, on other kits or, or you know, d demo kits, floor kits, that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it really... <laughs> and now I got so much time. Um, but, yeah, thanks, Brian, for all that. And... Uh, then I also, I threw a splash up here too, because Brian and I were talking about a splash. So I've got my Peisty 20, my splash, another, uh, just a, I think that's a B12 um, Zildjian S series, then my Minel Byzance, and then my K uh, Fast Crash over here. So that's what I'm working with right now, guys, and uh, my buddy's here, so I'm going to let him in, but... Yep, just trying to get the Mapex back up and uh, threw the 10 back up on there and then um, with the UVs. So, um, all right, guys, have a great day. Just wanted to kind of show the setup and uh, wish everyone a great day. And uh, I'll have these going soon. All right, take care, guys. Bye.